Hello and welcome to Profiles with Paulette Payne. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule this evening to join me. We have an amazing show lined up tonight and I've just been so emotional behind the scenes full of gratitude um, for tonight and for tonight's guests. But first I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you. Thank you so much for the support you've shown Profiles uh, in this short time. Um, I was just sharing with my producer that in June, I wanted to launch this show and I was so stressed out about it. So wanting everything to line up and I hadn't done the work. And God said, wait, wait until August, the month of your birth, and I'll give you everything you need. So thank you for coming along this journey with me. Um, eight years ago this month, I was given the opportunity to host not one, but two television talk shows. The first I called Profiles with Paulette Payne. And, you know, I entertained inviting this guest, my next guest on. Uh, but I thought, they don't have time for little me. They don't have time for little me. Uh, but I pushed through the doubt. I pushed through the uncertainty. And I reached out to their, their management team. And it was the best show. It was the best show. And so d this month, my birthday month, eight years later, I did the same thing. And they're here tonight joining me to talk about everything I've got, love, marriage, and music. Her voice will carry you through the highs and lows of life and will take you to church and back in one verse. Her effervescent spirit is only matched by her brilliant smile and bold red lip, y'all. I love it. I tried to replicate it tonight, but I don't, I don't know how successful I was. <laughs> she is strength and sunshine personified. He is the other half of this dynamic duo, this musical team, Big Shine Music. He is her rock, her partner in music and marriage. And together they have three independent releases under their belts. Avery Sunshine, The Sunroom and 2064, along with countless appearances and performance, performances around the globe. Y'all please welcome back to Profiles with Paulette Payne. Miss Avery Sunshine and Mr. Dana Johnson. Thank you all. Uh, we can't hear you. Unmute oh, you. Right. Uh, can you hear us now? We can hear you and we can all see right. you shining brightly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes tonight. How are y'all? We're great. Thank you for inviting us, Paula. <laughs> we, we couldn't help but um, listen to your producer. Um, like I wrote down what she said. She said something in here. I had to write, make my notes because I love her. She said, she said, uh, set it up. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Tell her I love her. And um, we're, we're just so glad to be here with you eight years later. And happy birthday month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I definitely want to go straight into the interview, but you know, there is an elephant in this room and um it's caused many of us around the world to be very emotional um, <clears throat> with the recent death yesterday of Chadwick Bozeman, Jacob mm -hmm. Blake, hurricanes, voter suppression, systemic racism, Breonna Taylor, COVID-19, canceled shows. How are you two remaining positive and, and enjoying the sunshine in this moment? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, in addition to, with all of that, in addition to your own personal stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we never even really get to, you know, live in that space to, to figure out some of the stuff we've got going on. Because there's so much coming at us in such a way that it is, it is, it's remarkable. Yeah. It's remarkable. So I'm grateful that I have a companion that is... I mean, uh, literally, no, but I, it is good to have someone to, someone that you like. Yeah. That I, I don't just love him, I like him. Right. And we're making this thing work together. You know, the, 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 it hasn't been easy. I, all of the, the weight, the weight of everything and my emotions, you already know, I'm, he, I know he says I'm a lot already. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff, piled on it is it's taken a lot of um reading right when you can say uh, bringing in new information and new insight to mm -hmm. our our space and our paradigm um counseling mm -hmm. um which is real uh personal time with god reflection 
um, good food. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it, it's taking all of that to maintain this this balance because mm -hmm. it it feels like every, that, like like you're stand you're trying to stand up mm -hmm. on a slope like this. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels every day. Every day. Every day. Every and and to add on to that, when you have people in your circle that don't understand, you yeah. know, and sometimes aren't willing to go outside of their norm yeah. to understand. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's heavy. It's a it heavy is. time. It's a it heavy is. time. It is. But the sun continues to shine. It does. It it's right before we got on, I had to because I have not felt like posting shiny stuff and so I have to force myself and mm -hmm. remind myself that well we still are alive my mother who was 82 said to me she said I'm gonna live until I'm dead yeah and, the yeah. Still live. and then she and we all know you still live. but but you know and the, the death of the physical right right mm -hmm. so while I am still here in the physical form I'm gonna live she's mm -hmm. 82 years old and she said that so how dare I, who, who, you know, I ain't been on, I've been on the earth a little less than half that. Um, I ha how dare I, I, I lose hope? How dare I, um, you know, uh, yeah. And I, I do think that the thing I've been dealing with is allowing myself to, to, to feel mm -hmm. upset, to feel mad, to feel sad acknowledge it okay now we got to get on out of it right. we can't stay here right yep. you're still alive yep yep and we still got to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we absolutely do um mm -hmm. and you were well, you were saying something earlier about uh god i forgot what it was we're reading um conversations with god and the idea of being in tune with the God that is in you mm -hmm. and being aware and knowing that all the answers for everything you already, you know them, you just have to call them forth. If that, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we end up a lot of times worrying and, and when we haven't even asked some of the questions, God, what do you need me to do? How, change, can you change? Tell me what I need to do to change. Help me hear your voice in all of this. And um, so when I say that reflection, that's the space that I've really found myself in, especially after this, the anger and the, I mean, back to back to back before we can, you're talking about breathe, before we can come up for air, God forgive me for using that, but before we can come up for air, God rest his soul, George Floyd, here we are again, pressed down even farther. Yeah. I, I don't you know, I was watching, um, uh, was it Don Lemon last night? And they were talking about how the black man must feel when that happens. I know how black women feel. I know I'm not letting you talk, but because you, you talk a lot, don't start. But you know, <laughs> my, my point is how, how you feel as a black man, all of this going on, it, how does that make you feel? You know? Yeah, so, so you know what's interesting, and I'm sorry, we just we just took over the whole. Can you thing. tell? <laughs> can you tell we needed to talk. It's what you're saying. Look, that's what it's all about. <laughs> it's so much. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, yeah, we, can I take over? We just took over. But but uh, thank you for having us. Um, you know, as a black man and as the black man that I am, you know, all all of the things that that my wife kind of. Um, Talk about yeah, I feel every bit of that, and the, you know some of the obvious ups and downs and anxieties and and all that that go along with 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 every bit of that. Um, from uh, you know to a year's worth of work being canceled to just being in the house and not you know we're used to traveling right. you know one hundred and fifty thousand two hundred thousand miles a year. Yeah. And to travel probably this whole year, we've traveled about a hundred and six. Yes. And that's just a change, you know, yeah. for us. So, so all of, all of the changes that have come about, um, have been just new. Yeah. And, um, I'm, I'm trying my best 
to be just the best person that I could be yeah. and take advantage of these times. Yeah. Uh, if I'm feeling something, I'm trying to feel it and then decide to feel differently if exactly. I need to or, or kind of exactly. stay there if I need to exactly. and do what, whatever you know, self-work and, mm -hmm. and uh, personal reflection and growth, things that I can, taking up a few new hobbies, bike riding, photography, uh, a little bootleg gourmet cooking, <laughs> you know, uh, a little bit of everything. And, um, and kind of really just have focused on taking this time, you know, you know, with some of the more obvious things, more specific to being a black man, you know, I've always been keenly aware of uh, the systematic things that seem to uh, continually oppress us. And, and, and the thing about it is, it's not new. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not something that, that just started happening or mm -hmm. just picked up or has had a spike. I've experienced those things you know, as a teen, you know, in Oakland, California, I mean, I've, I've had a couple of run-ins with police and law enforcement that were uh, violent, to say the least. And um, that's always a challenge. I think the biggest challenge is having sons, teenage and college-age sons. Uh, and and, and uh, I was having a conversation with, with our middle boy, Micah, and I was telling him, hey, man, you know, when you go out, do this and then make sure you call me and put this thing on your phone so I know where you are and blah, 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 and this and that. And, man, make sure you do this and don't go here and don't do – and he, was, he said, Dad, you don't – trust like, you, you talk to me like you don't trust me. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to do anything crazy. And I was like, you know what? First of all, you're 18. And you are going to do something crazy, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to, you're 18. The thing that's challenging is you don't get the same chances in many cases that other young American 18 boy, 18 year old boys get. And so as a dad, it, it, it gives me, I have more angst about my, my young, my young sons and my daughter for that matter too, uh, than I do for, you know, for myself mm -hmm. because I feel like, um, you know, I'm an old dude. When they see me, it's just like, I'm just like, oh, I'm just an older oh, dude, middle aged dude. Oh. Oh. I'm a middle aged dude, but they, when they see, when they see my boys, they, all they see is young black men that might have a trendy hairstyle and might have on a hoodie. Have a hoodie yes. So he, he, he likely is a thug or something. Mm -hmm. And, and, they're not. They're college kids. Yeah. They're, they're college kids on, on, on scholarship and studying music and studying communications and studying all different kinds of things. Can I speak things. to that, though? Either way, it doesn't matter. Don't judge right. where you think they are intellectually, where, they, where you think they might be, wh whatever they're, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. they deserve to be treated with respect. Absolutely, and the, but that's bottom my, line. But that's my point. And I'm sorry, we we haven't let you say a word. We, we don't let you. We, we, <laughs> that's it's so fresh, Paulette. It's so fresh, and I know. And you know, the the thing about it is, you know, we talk about this in our feeds. You know, I see people posting. There's such hurt and such pain and such anger. You know, um, and some of us are talking about it in our families, but yeah. until we really start having this dialogue, this conversation, yeah. it'll build and it'll swell until, you know, who knows? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm glad you all feel free to share your hearts because yeah. that's what tonight is about, sharing the heart of Avery, the heart of Dana, the yeah. heart of this marriage, the heart of this business, yeah. um, and the heart for the people. And so I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Um, and, and another thing that I've, I've been so perplexed by is this whole process of stereotyping the people and not understanding the history from which they come. Right. So, because certainly these systems have, the, the country was, this country was set up with systems in place yes. to disenfranchise black people. And yes. when I hear people say, you know, we're, we're making progress, you know, systemic racism does not exist. It's enough to make you want to go off because you speak from experience. Yes, you right. are the expertise in this area because you right. live and you live in. Nothing makes me angrier than hearing them say, you know, that, you know, stop uh, looting and stop being violent and stop blah, 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 blah. 
there's some they're able to separate yeah. that action from the impetus for the action and that is so troubling mm -hmm. they're, so they're able to they, I, I don't understand that. You can't talk about the person, looted, the disenfranchised, speaking, using that what as a language because you don't hear me otherwise. I got to tear your stuff up. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're listening to me. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing they address. That's the only thing that is addressed. It prevents them from doing the work. Wow. To, 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 it prevents them from doing the work. Simple as that. And but until, I, I, yeah, until I, there's a desire yes. to do some internal processing of your thoughts and your norms yeah. and, and, and allowing empathy and compassion to step in, yeah. unfortunately, we'll continue to have this dialogue. We'll continue yeah. to have this dialogue. Yeah. Um, but my prayer is that, as we talked about a few minutes ago, God covering us all oh, and keeping absolutely. us free. Absolutely. That being, that absolutely. Absolutely. Desire. Um, now, Avery and Dana, eight years ago, you released your self-debut uh, album, Avery Sunshine. Since that time, you, you know, you've gotten married mm -hmm. and you've traveled the world and just all these amazing um, things that have happened in your life. In this eight years time, what, and I know this might be a, <laughs> a spur of the moment question, but what's been one of the, the highlights in this eight years for the two of you in career in love and you know just living oh i can tell you buying our home oh. that was huge for us we were living in we were paying rent at three different places my place his place in our studio mm -hmm. and i think the kids and we were still married Mm -hmm. it, yeah, because we were moving we were traveling so much we didn't have time to figure that out we got married it was like we were on the road mm -hmm. and I think we came home with the kids and the kids were like, so how many times we going to stay over here and then go over there and then go over here. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And on our baby boys, I think his 16th birthday took him to Chicago and he got really, really ill. So while we're sitting in the hotel, we didn't get a chance to do a whole, whole bunch. I looked in my credit karma to check out my credit score, right? Because I'm learning. That's how I keep up. I look at it every day. Make sure. Right. Because <laughs> um, that's where the power is. We need to, huh? I hope somebody, right. huh? Keep that credit, huh? Mm -hmm. um, so I looked at my credit and it, I called Dana. I said, Dana, look, I cr my credit looks really, really good. Yours is jamming. Let's stop fooling around. Let's go ahead and get a house. He was like, okay. As simple as that. So that was like February... This thing happened so fast. That was on February 10th. On March 14th, we closed on this house. Congratulations. So thank you so much. So the, the big deal about it was on February 10th, I did the application for the loan, right? Maybe a week later, we had to leave for um, Johannesburg, South Africa, Indonesia, Jakarta, Indonesia, and Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. So we left a week later after we started the process. Mm -hmm. We came home at the day before we closed. We did the entire process overseas. Oh my goodness. I don't know how we did it. Mm -hmm. I know we landed and we went to closing. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. good. Are you young? Are you young? Look, this Dana, are you getting bored? This is what, <laughs> no, no, see, no. see, that's why I let him talk. That's <laughs> but, but you know, I'm teasing with him, but my husband does the thing that he said a little bit earlier from being a, a, a photographer now to a director to, uh, I mean, you name it, he's doing it. When you see the live shows that we do, if you've seen one, he's mm -hmm. been the one making sure everything is happening. Uh, I have a performance to do when I, um, when we finish here, Dana is setting everything up and getting, he's been doing everything. So I, just so you know, I'm proud of you. I'm going to say it in front of Paul and everybody else. I'm proud of you, black man. I'm proud of you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I'm, I, you know, listen, Paulette, it's real. I could not do yeah. this and without 
my husband and I, I and I know that is the case for anybody that's doing anything. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it alone. You're not doing it alone. That's right. And when you say partner, it truly is a connection, a union. Yes. Two people coming together to make life work. Yes. It's true. Now, and, and, and talking about that, so I'm coming from a single person's perspective. Yeah. The two of you, of course, you were single before you got married. When when did you know that this union had to happen, when this marriage had to happen? What 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 was it? Because let me tell you, when y'all came to the studio eight years ago, after y'all finished and left, I said, mm-hmm. Something's gonna happen with them. But but listen, no, but I'm gonna um you can tell Dana was married and I, I was divorced. And I knew because we were just close friends working together. My uh -huh. father, bless his God rest his soul and bless his heart. Before, while Dana was still married, and my father said, That's your husband. What? My father yeah. said it. And I'll never forget my mother saying, Irvin, shut up. You always run in your mouth. Don't you say that. Don't you speak that over on people's lives. I'll never forget <laughs> But I was so embarrassed that he would say that. Did you did he, did you hear him say it? I remember, no, I don't I don't remember hearing him say it, but I remember you telling me that. But but that was, you know, that was horrible. But he saw something and, and knew something. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, in 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 a hundred percent transparency, like um I think that when you meet when you meet people you search stuff you just know, you know what I mean? And um, it, it, it just, you know, things happen how they happen. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say this, um, when, when someone comes into your life and, and they just seem to fit completely mm -hmm. seamlessly, I'm not saying perfectly, but, but mm -hmm. seamlessly. Yeah. Um, no, well, no, I mean, you know that, that that person is there for a reason. And, um, and, and I mean, just without, you know, that, that's really just w what happened. I mean, um, we are so compatible in so many areas, uh, you know, so, some very obvious, like, like music and just personality, but, but in other very ways, in the places that we're not the same, we're, we are very yin and yang. Absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. it, all just, it all just works out. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say, you know, you were saying from a single standpoint, when do you know? The main thing is, I think, is just being open to um, to the possibilities, mm. and, it's, and, and it very well may yeah. not look like yes what you think. Like I hear a lot of men and women say, you know, when I find somebody, they got to be like this, and they got to be this tall, and this, and they and they booty got to look like this, and they got to, you know. And and at the end of the day, that may or may not be the case, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and and God might send you some something far better, absolutely, than what you expect, and and you have to just be open to that. I I, um, I say often that we um, we kind of teach our kids and ourselves, you know, uh, in a lot of ways that things are supposed to look a certain way. Like you know, you do this, and you and you, and you go this, and you go to college. And you don't get don't get like this a fluffy degree. Get a business degree. I was told, you know, you you need to go be a CPA and go do this and go do that. And then you graduate from school and then you get married and you get this kind of house and job. And a lot of that stuff is maybe it worked for our parents or or somebody that they met one time. <laughs> it didn't work for them, but it, it may or may not be everyone's story and and, and um yeah, often, it, some people. often it's not though yeah. often it's not you know I, I think if we if we took the time to really listen and watch and be mindful of what is being sent to us yeah. uh we would we would f miss far less opportunities and, and, and probably end up being happier and freer maybe less stuff maybe more stuff maybe a bigger house maybe a smaller house but that's really not the measure yeah yeah. Cause I wasn't listening. My first marriage, I wasn't listening. I just yeah. went ahead and got married. Sorry, right, I'm gonna do it, God. I know. I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay. Okay. We learned the lesson afterwards. You but know? and then I was blessed. That's why. That's why we have to. You know, the song says, "I I I I praise you in the good and the bad. We need it all. Because even in that, I considered it ugh, one of the lower periods in my existence, but one of the best in that I." Two of the greatest gifts ever, these kids. Mm. 
And now their father is, we're all a family. We all, I mean, we're still family. It didn't turn out the way I thought it would, you know, but um yeah, you just never know. I think we have to be open with something that you said to the possibility that things can be different than what you think they should be and are. And also knowing that your timetable is just that your timetable, because see what we fail to realize is God is all knowing and mm -hmm. he is the master creator, of course, and he has the master plan for our lives. And if we just give it to him, you know, I like to give it to him and take it away. You know, yeah. because apparently I don't trust them enough to let them keep it. You yeah. know? <laughs> so we've got to learn to be vulnerable and relinquish yeah. our desire for power and yeah. control. This is true. This is true. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you talked about how you're compatible. And then you talked about areas that, you know, you're not, you're yin, yin and yang. Um, what, are, what are some ways you all are able to diffuse situations when they happen because you know we live together i live with my family and you know we get on each other's nerves sometimes so how how are you able to diffuse that what what is your technique and then what are some um what's some guidance you can give to those who are married those who are single living what, what what's what are your thoughts on that can, again I'm, i need to start but he has to finish this okay the day we were sitting on the sofa so it was right here and we were going at it. You came down. I was like, I don't want to talk to you. Give me See, I'm the one that is, give me a minute. I'll let you know when I'm ready to talk. Not him. Well, what you want? Tell me now. Tell me now. What's happening? Can you all right? Tell me now. And the more you do that, the tighter I get. So this particular day, he kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Do you remember that? You pushed. I don't remember. You remember. <laughs> he pushed and he pushed. And then he stopped. And he taught me something that day. You brought it down and we we talked until we fixed it. Do you remember that day? You were right there. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Fantastic. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> you know what though? This this is what I was I, I will say. And, and something that I'm not a conflict guy in general. No, no, you no, are. You no, go back no. and I'm not. I'm not. But what I am learning is it's better to go ahead and have the uncomfortable moment and say what you need to say mm -hmm. rather than let it build up over time mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and be easy to do in the back. Right. <laughs> is, that, is that Drew? That's our daughter in the back. Uh, let, it, let it build up over time. And, um, and then you, you, you start, then every little thing, it's irritating. But I, I, Dana, to your point, okay. I, I do yeah. think that it is important to talk about it. Sometimes you, there's some things, and I kept saying, I need to process how I feel about this before I have a, a conversation with you. And that's what I, what we're learning to respect. I felt like you were listening to me when I said that I need to process this before I have a conversation about it. Okay, we still have yeah, work to do. Yeah, well, well, I, we I still think, have work. I to think do. that's true, and that, and that's, and that. I think that's where finding the balance is. You know, you you have to um, first and foremost, you know, speak from a place of what is actual, like how you feel, and not and not so much, uh, not so much, um, kind of. And, and then, I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna, you know, because we we can. Myself included, you know, we, we I don't get it like that. Oh, come on, that's a in the net. You even we don't come on, tell the truth, tell the truth. No, man, not, not that, like that. It, it's not the very, very, but but it, it, it's a it's a certain thing. But but with all that said, you know, if you can get kind of past the adversarial kind of I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna one up you, I'm gonna have something yeah. slicker to say than you. Once you get past that and you can talk about yeah. how you really, really feel, and even if it's not pleasant, and that's where the, where the real communication and the real um, healing, for lack of a better term, comes. Yeah. But, but, but what you can't do is, like, like, like she said, you can't just jump into it and, and it's all emotion and no facts and no real feelings. It's yeah. just all emotion. intense emotion and an anger and, mm -hmm. and, and wanting to be heard. And, and kind of stepping stepping back and having a conversation, even if there's something that doesn't feel good to hear, you don't need to defend it. You just need to hear it 
and then you need to say how you feel and then talk about where the miscommunication was. Because in every single situation, and, and something that I always say, you got to know that I'm, you know, we're in this together. Like we're, we're not on, we're on the same team. So you know, I always use this analogy. Like if we're on the same basketball team and, and you pass me the ball and I miss it, it's not because I wanted to miss it. It's just because I was looking, you know, I was trying to set up the next play or do something and, and we just weren't on the same page. It's just a miscommunication. And once we're able to sit down and communicate um, for real, then that's that's kind of where we're able to move past. But but we have to we have to deal with it with the right timing, and then we also ha still have to deal with it because you know it, it's been that's probably more me. If I I, I tend to like oh, okay, let it ride, let it ride, and then one day I'm like, come on, man, for real, you know. And then it's and then it and it, it, it kind of bubbles. I, I just want to add this one thing that is super important when you're having the conversations though that you're able to uh, repeat back what you heard the other one say. Mm -hmm. Cause that, I, cause I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. I can hear you if I've said something to you and you're speaking to me like you heard nothing that I could say, nothing, nothing I said, I'm done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Cause you can't even respond to me if you have not digested or even processed what I've said. And I, I found, I found that that's what happens here. Right. You did. And you know, too, um, communicating without the need to be right. Yeah. I, know I find myself in this situation many times, sometimes more times than not. I know that my perspective and my thought is correct. And so you need to hear it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you need to accommodate it. It's but true. That's not, that's, <laughs> and that's, that's not how you resolve situations. You're right. You're right. You, you intensify the situation when yeah. you come in that spirit. And, and you're right. That and you're so, right. Uh, go on. I was saying you're right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and so what I've noticed, and it's certainly intentional, I'm sure. Your music over the years has been a reflection of relationships, re reflections of life experiences. Um, is it intentional? Is it is it a form of therapy for you? Um, mm -hmm. What is that process like? To, yeah. to, 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 I'd like to, to answer that one. Sing what's yeah. going on in life mm -hmm. as you lead. So, so it is intentional, but what I'm finding out is not even our intention. It's just how the gift or how the songs come to us. Because often, like especially now, you know, um, there's things that we've written that don't make sense really till now. And, and or they mean something completely different now mm -hmm. than they did. Like it's it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was riding my bike. I ride a few miles every day, and I was thinking to myself, like, does our art imitate life, or does our life imitate the art? Because often the song will happen, and then later it's like, wow, that applies right now. We wrote this song like five years ago or whatever. So it, it I believe it's intentional. It's it it's. Dana, Dana, one second. I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like we've uh, there's a there's a glitch. Okay, there we go. There was a glitch okay. in the audio. We're good now. We're good. Okay, okay. here's okay now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. yeah. Did you? Did you, I, I don't know how much it Didn't was. Didn't hear any of that. Didn't oh, hear. Oh no. <laughs> That's so, fantastic. So, so I was saying intentional. That. You were saying it yeah. is you were riding your bike is art imitating life. Yeah. So I, I was saying it's it's probably forty nine percent intentional on our part, mm -hmm. and then forty nine, and then fifty one. I want to make sure that I was trying to do the math in my head and talk. <laughs> 51% the intention of God and just the universe yeah. and how, how the songs are, are presented to mm -hmm. us because they often end up being yeah. meaningful mm -hmm. after the fact. I mean, they're meaningful in the moment when we're writing them, but they, mm -hmm. they end up being even more meaningful 
you know, af after the fact and, and, mm -hmm. and on, on, you know, once, you know, at, at some later date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm really interested to know how did the concept or not necessarily how the concept came, because it's obvious um, used car. I, I absolutely love the song, by the way. Thank what you. Was, was, you're welcome. What was did you write the song, David? Avery, did you write? The, did you come together? And and how how was it that you were able to deliver this message that certainly rings true to so many people? You know, um, talk to us about the, the whole concept behind used car. Well, you know, that that's our relationship. Both of us were uh, divorced. Not used, though, but. <laughs> that the metaphor is the right yeah. used car and ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, ironically, right now, um, they said used car, the values of used cars are going up. People only want used cars right now. Mm hmm I'm not sure what that means, but I, the idea that we thought that, that that's something that was maybe we'll use not in abused, but used as an experienced, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? right? And having been through something a few times, that, that meaning of used, and it was about us, and ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, my mother telling me, and my father saying, ain't nothing wrong, was that? We, a deer. It did, we had a deer just run across the back, and both of us were I thought it was, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> uh, but my, our parents, you know, um, both of my parents being married once before, I think, yeah. At any rate, ain't nothing wrong with it. Again, tearing down those things that we thought were, you know, it, it only has to be one way. And that's not the truth. It's, that's just not true. So that song is all about that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. If you feel some kind of way and you and, and you want to date this person who's who's married and oh, 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 oh Lord Jesus, I didn't even say that. Jesus Christ, you guys say that? Married before. Married before with yes. children. And, and listen, bottom line is we all have to figure those things out for ourselves. Our in sharing our story, we hope that we encourage people to live the lives that they were called to lead. lead and live. You don't have to do it exactly how we did it. We're not telling you how to do it, but whatever that thing is that God is speaking to you to do, obey that. Listen to that. And I, I also believe in, in, even in, when I say obey that, there is this um, uh, uh, partnership with us and God. Because God, absolutely God works, but if we don't get up and move with faith without works, it's nothing is dead, right? So we, 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 while we're listening to God, we're also saying, God, this is some of the stuff. This, I want this. And, and there's always this, this, this partnership. Mm -hmm. This partnership that is always going on, that, that is consistent, that, you know, helps you figure it out. And for me, we're nothing wrong with a used car. Yeah, if y'all had heard this, get me and be inspired. Um, now, Avery, on the flip side of that, and Dana, there are people who go into relationships after having been married, and even prior to going into a second marriage, they 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 themselves feel used. They themselves mm -hmm. feel worthless, and there, there's this um, <clears throat> emotional process that they have to work through. What do you say to men and women who are entertaining getting remarried or ha have issue with being a divorcee? Um, how, how would you advise them to work through that process? Uh, I, I, I could say for, for us, um, well, I'll start with me personally. I think that there, there, there's, you have to know when you're ready, you have to do your own healing and your own work mm -hmm. to be appropriately ready mm -hmm. and, or, well, I, I think you need to do that at some level. And then also there's, there's a, a, a joint um, kind of melding and, and healing and, and, and kind of joining that has to happen, whether you've been married or not, yeah. that, that you have to just be open to. And, but I think more than anything, you have to operate just in, in, in love yeah. and, not, and not ownership and not, um, and, and not just convenience and just like, well, you're supposed to do this and, I'm supposed, and it's supposed to look like this. You kind of have to, 
adjust some of your thinking or possibly adjust some of your thinking in some of those spaces yeah. and prepare yourself to be, you know, a partner with someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether you've been married before or not, I think that part is important. But but more more than anything, you know, um, the baggage that you're carrying, you gotta you gotta drop some of that stuff yeah. off. And some of the lessons that you've learned about what didn't work, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you don't repeat some of those things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if I'm honest, like some of the, the gripes that I might have had in, in previous marriages, a uh, marriage or, or and or relationship. We are relationship. really saying all kinds of stuff tonight. Did you say marriages? No, marriage and, and relationships. You know, I... I can see some some of the patterns that reappear. It's like, so what's the common denominator? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my thing. That's me doing that. Yeah. I need to figure out what's causing this thing. Me too. And mm -hmm. and um, I I think you you have to be really, um, yeah, the, all those things. Oh, and then lastly, I guess in line with what I was just saying, um, you have to be ready to to. Uh, um, regulate the most and the thing that you have the most control over is and that's you mm -hmm. and 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 be ready to um be everything that you can be for the relationship and and don't don't expect that someone else has to 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 do all the work and, and i'd like to add find a counselor mm -hmm. so you're not going through this and wearing your friends did that saying the same stuff over and over and over right. And not doing anything differently. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we can't get caught up in that. And our friends will be there with us. All right. All right. I know. And they'll be kind because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Go to somebody who's going to say, listen, do you want something different? Mm -hmm. You've got to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. And th that didn't happen for me. Th that happened for me when I saw a counselor. Mm -hmm. Did the, what, you, what you said, I was clear that there were things, you know, I, I say it in my first marriage that I, things that I did that were not helpful, that were not uh, um, encouraging, that, that were emasculating. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't, I didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said my first marriage, do you have to do this? <laughs> you just got to show up. Yeah, all these people. people. <laughs> I really more um, <laughs> but it's, 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 I, I think in, in addition to what Dana said, I think it's really important to have someone to talk to That's right. through the process. It just, it just is. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing wrong with having a, another mind, another no. voice, another person no. in that room to no. talk about this process. Because when you look at it, this, this is a union between two people. Yeah. And you're going to be living together for the rest of your life. Yeah. So you want to be able to, live in love, live in harmony, live in peace. Yes. And without that third person, you know, of course, ultimately God, but without that of other course. Of um, course. it can be difficult and it's yeah. okay. There's nothing wrong with therapy. Yeah. I've yeah. been to a therapist and it changed my life. Change. Changed my life. I got one now. Me too. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. No. Nothing no. It's nothing a to, to me, it's a necessity. It's, right. Especially now, I remember as soon as this hit, I think it'd be maybe a week after the uh, pandemic hit for real. And we were on quarantine mm -hmm. getting emails from uh, counselors and I, I would delete them. Mm -hmm. And then a month in, I was like, yeah. let me go ahead and find that one that I deleted. You know, I'm glad to see my husband. And some, I need to talk about how I'm feeling. I've been home for at this point, six months, ain't traveled nowhere, ain't been nowhere. My shoulder's tight. What's going on with me? I've got stuff going on. I'm internalizing all these feelings and the feelings of maybe not being productive in the way that I'm used to being productive and, or just seeing the same thing over and over again. It's affecting me and I need to be able to talk about it. And you, yeah. you know, has it affected you? Did you feel like yeah, I, I mean, again, I think those are some of the things that, that we talked about at the beginning, but, yeah. but but absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it's a complete change, and yeah. um, it manifests itself in ways that that sometimes are, you know, not explainable, or, or you you don't even realize it until like it's like, man, my 
back is really, yeah. you know, this yeah. and that. I've never had problems like this with my back, but yeah. it probably at least some of it is tension. Yeah. And and in the past, maybe I released the tension by performing or traveling yeah. or something else. So I've had to find other things. Uh, and, and, and frankly, that was one of the things that my, my therapist said, you know, he's like, so what, what is something that you did as a kid that you just like to do? I was like, I like ride, you know, I used to ride my bike a lot. I used to enjoy that. He was like, oh, today, go buy a bike and ride it and just do it. You need it. You know, I was like, wow. Huh. So just trying, just trying to do that. And, and um, I don't even know how we got there. We, I right? was asking you, I don't even know either. We just got caught up, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> we're just so happy to be talking to somebody. <laughs> That's the truth. On my couch. <laughs> yeah. was, we are. <laughs> um, so we have a question from the audience. Um, and look, you guys, if you have questions at any point, please, you know, put them in the thread of, of this broadcast, and we'll. Oh, you know, we didn't see. Um, so mm -hmm. one person asks, "What advice would you give to your younger self?" Mm. Oh wow. I would tell my younger self, you were so beautiful, just how you are. Yeah. Stop comparing yourself to everything and everyone else. You are perfect. Your voice is perfect. Your eyes are perfect. Your, your natural hair is perfect. Mm -hmm. You are perfect. Love on you just like you are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Yeah. What about you? I think I would tell myself to take take the risk. Don't yeah. be and don't be so concerned about what people think or will think, because yeah. often they don't really care. Yeah. And and uh, and we create these these difficulties and these anxieties for ourselves that um, yeah are, are frankly not that real. So I would say take the risk and don't worry about what people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I would tell myself to get out of my own way. Yeah. So many yeah. times I have blocked my progress. I've blocked my blessing. Me too. I'm just going through all these scenarios in my head about yeah. what, what will go wrong. Yes. Yeah. We need to we need to reframe that that thought and say what would go right. You know, yes. it yeah. works out and it becomes the best thing that I've ever done. It's the truth. It's, you tell them, listen, I, listen, I mess up a good thing, work out, and then go have a piece of cake and then make you know? feel bad about it. And I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to get up tomorrow because I ate that cake. No, have the cake, enjoy it. But just get up tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Get up the next day. And if you want some cake, then have a little piece of cake then too. It's, and stop. Yeah, I was going to tell you that it got dark. Let, Let's stop beating ourselves up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm sorry, you guys. I, I'm listening. I just, my, my producer, who is my sister, by the way. <laughs> I love her. She has this tiny handwriting that I cannot see. My bad, my eyes are bad enough as it is. So she's going to read, read the question. Read okay, the question. okay. Read loud enough. How do you balance being married and in love, but maintaining who you are as an individual? That's now that's very very interesting yeah. uh counseling <laughs> yeah. no 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 but no in conversations with people outside of your pod mm -hmm. because that'll help you because it, the real oh god that, that that question is so good i find myself i married this man because i respect his mind his soul his heart mm -hmm. um so usually if I have a question about something, how I should respond to something, how I should do something, I, I go to him because I respect him in that space. Hey, honey, what do you think about? What do you think about? And I find myself sometimes doing it and not leaning on my own voice enough. And um, you don't, I don't notice it and because we're just so close. You don't notice it until you go to say something, go to give an idea. And he's like, yeah, you should do it. Like, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I didn't ask you to do that, but wait, I had given him so much permission. I've come to him so much for that, but this, this is real that he, there's some unlearning and that we have to talk about. Oh, he says, tell me what, do you want my opinion right now? Don't, isn't that a part of our new thing? Yeah, I've, I've found that to be a prudent question and before mm -hmm. offering an opinion. 
But I think, but I, I think having people outside again of your pod, having folks other than your companion to talk to, yeah. and to, it really does help. And we, you know, he may have a weekly thing with his homies. Mine is every other week with some other energy, with some other folks to talk to to bring you back. So that's how we balance it. Are you going to say something else? Yeah, um, you know, I was going to say that if if you really think about it, right? And, and, and the question was, you know, how do you maintain yourself when being in love. So what real love is, is acceptance. Hmm. Is, you know, I love you, I love you. Yeah. Not what I want you to be, not what not what I can ch change you or, and manipulate you That's to be, good, Dana. but love is exactly how you are right now. Even if you're a little different tomorrow. Come on, let, let me get the offering plate. You preaching it now, sir. And, and so I think when you, when you approach love from Jeez. that perspective and kind of reaching back to some things we were talking uh, closer to the top um, and, and taking away your checklist and your ex mm. all these expectations and just live in the right now that is the acceptance of love, then you don't really have to worry about that as much. Yeah, you, you've taught me that, though. I have to... He taught me... That I'm about to go in a different. Do we? You know about to do somewhere else. When I think of that, though, in in waiting on God to 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 give you that soulmate, that partner, it's just it's just wise to wait for God to do it because God has given me someone who who saw more in me than I saw in myself at times, and. It's just who he is. I say, oh, I got another stretch mark. He's like, oh, I don't even see it. Like he reads in the, in the knee. You, you don't see this? Look, look closer. And he's like, no, nah, I don't see it. There is something so beautiful and amazing about that. I, I'm sorry, I just needed to step away to say that really quickly. Because in hearing you talk about just a lot, the acceptance that's the acceptance. You accept me exactly the way. If it, I, I'll never forget hearing somebody say, whoever you are with, can you love them like they are right now without any expectations for tomorrow? Right. Wow. It may not be love. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Exactly. I, I submit that it may be. That's right. If, you, if they never change, if they never lose weight, if they never gain weight, if they never get a job, if they never... Can you love them like that right now? Or love, do you think you can love them like that forever? Because I think that's a hard question too, because we're always changing. But right now, today, you love them just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just say we commit, if we commit to that, th those days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years, decades. And next thing you know, you know, we're like grandma and grandpa. How long they've been married? Yeah, look, it'll be past 2064. It'll be 2064 and beyond. It'll be 2064. Dana will be 112. <laughs> not be 72. Oh, goodness. <laughs> look, Avery and Dana, on that, let's just take a quick pause because, look, I want to upload this to, inst to Instagram. Okay. We'll let you go more than an hour. So we're going to take a quick pause because I got to okay. Five, four, three, two. One, y'all, this is live now, so it's gonna go <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me, yes. So, um, when I go into the music, we talked about the music a little bit, but when I uh go into this particular song, you all recently did a campaign, the How Will You Remember Me campaign. Yeah, mm -hmm. can you talk to the viewers who aren't familiar with that? Um, yeah. how did that come about? What was the impetus behind it? Yeah. So at the time, shoot, at this point, I think it was a month and a half, almost two months ago, we were asked by a, 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 some friends of ours, they told us they were doing a campaign called Loved Ones Not Numbers. And they said, would you, would you guys be willing to, to write a song for, our, um, for this campaign? And we were like, yeah, sure. And at the time that they asked us, George Floyd was murdered. So we were like, sure, don't really know. I don't really want to feel like writing no song for people who are dying of COVID when we out here dying of being black. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
And um, God works as God does. Um, uh, let me just back up to say George Floyd's murder was paralyzing. And I, I know not just for us, but for me to express how I was really feeling when we were writing this song, I felt paralyzed uh, for at least four or five days. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say, what to do, how to feel, nothing. And here we, we, we've committed to writing this song in honor of the lives that were lost to COVID. But I'm not even able to wrap my head around that. I, so the days go by. We, we told them it would be done on a Wednesday. Four or five days go by and Dana's like, we got to work on this song. We got up on a Monday morning. We sat down. And what we got was, How Will You Remember Me? A song that would honor not only the lives lost in COVID or to COVID, but the, the lives that were lost to police brutality, the lives lost to natural causes. Anybody who's lost to anybody who was unable to memorialize them during this time, this song was and is for them. And for someone who, like me, who lost my father a year ago, it's still, I'm still spinning. It was still a surprise for us. I'm still trying to figure that out, how, how I feel. And, and the song was, uh, was that. It, it was really like my dad saying, hey, how will you remember me? Will you, will you put my name in a song? Will you sing it all day long? Will you feel me in the air? How will you remember me? Will you say I was the life of the party? Well, what will you say about me? And we thought that was the most important thing. Making sure that people had a way to memorialize their family members in the midst of all of this turmoil and confusion. So you know, that, that's really, you know, that was about it. I mean, we wrote the song, had to be two hours. We wrote, recorded everything in, in a few hours, and we got it done. We just knew that was it. This is all we need to say. And, uh, and we hope that people are, we hope that it, it helps some healing. We hope that it helps in some understanding of, of where our loved ones are. And it, it, it does some soothing. You know, when I, when I think of, it, God knows, uh, God, Jacob Blake is still here, but he's mourning his, the activity of his limbs, mourning what his life was like before that moment. His children will mourn what their lives were like before that moment. You know, I, I will, you know, so I, again, I, there's just so much. I don't know. It's just the two of the three of us talking right now. If we all were talking right now about how we're feeling, I don't it's just, just imagine. Just imagine. It's heavy. It's so. When I um I was in my bed, you know, we always say we're gonna turn off our phone when we go to bed. We're not gonna scroll Instagram, Facebook, and usually we're there two or three more hours. Well, I'm scrolling last night and I see the headline. And and just a couple of days before that, Jacob Blake, you know, yep. and and not like you said at the open, Avery, and not to mention all of the things that we're dealing with in our personal spaces. Um, when I watched how you were, how will you remember me? I immediately thought about my own dad who passed mm -hmm. away twenty some odd years ago. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I wonder, do I remember him enough? Yeah. You know. Um, I was thinking before I was getting ready for the show, <clears throat> well, I get so emotional. Um, after he passed, I remember him visiting me in my dream. Mm. And this is when everything was still fresh. And we were on a lake in this canoe type, a canoe type of boat. And we pulled up to a tree and he said, I'm all right, mm -hmm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I am certain that while they're not here in the in the in the physical, their mm -hmm. spirit is always with us. Oh, absolutely! And I'll remember me. I remember when the butterflies fly. Absolutely! I remember you when the cardinals rest themselves on my patio. Listen, I remember you when I look in the mirror and I, and I see your eyes. 
Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? I'll remember you like you, when I sit in the car and I want some ice cream. And that's a moment that we shared. I'll remember you when I look at my husband and you told me that that was going to be my husband even before I knew it. I'll remember. That's how I'll remember you. You know, I, I'm, I share that. We're, we're part of a club now, right? That, that, that one that I never thought I would. You, you never dream about being, you know, you know, you're going to be it, but you just, when it happens, you're not. Mm. Yeah. So I share that with you, my dear sister, and I share the weight of that, but, but I thank you for reminding us. You're right. Yes, you're right. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's talk about really quickly pivoting in this time of COVID. So you're not flying, you're not traveling, you're not performing <laughs> in, in, you know, in the normal sense. Um, what, what has pivoting looked like for you? What have you, what have you done outside of your, you know, your, the hobbies that you're taking up? What does pivoting look like in a musical sense? For you in this well it, it is doing the shows here from the house it is trying to figure out um uh how to you know how to do the shows because we are still getting requests to do you know we listen a few months ago we had one to to go to, to a casino we were like no y'all got to be joking no um but we are considering doing something um, next month. And it's just one, one show. But we have to start. Hold on, Avery. There's a little glitch. Well, I don't know why the internet wants. There we go. Okay. Are we back? Uh, we're back. We can. <laughs> but we have to start in this, in this normal. Right. It is what it is. We can't. And when I say we stayed in the house, we didn't go anywhere. I mean, we ain't doing no. If you, you just be here, Instacart. We, we, Dana was taking stuff out of the car and washing everything up. We were oh, we think about it. Mm -hmm. And then we're kind of looking around it, and we're like, all right, we're going to have to figure out how to move around. We're going to, we just, we don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. we, don't have to, we don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. um, so, that that's what it's looking like musically. We're still making music, and we'll be releasing some stuff. I, th that's I'll say for me, it's challenging to release music when I feel like it is. Yeah, there's so many other things that are to it, the world. Uh, my interpretation of what what is what it's saying to me is. We don't need that music right now. We need to focus on something else. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's balancing. Balancing what I know to be true. And the truth is, we still need music. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, I you think know. of music of the civil rights era. Yeah. I think of music, the hip hop era. Yeah. I think of all of these errors errors that have gotten us through so many trying and difficult times. And there is a soundtrack for every season. Absolutely. What what songs do you think, old, you know, current, what songs do you think would comprise the playlist of this season that we're in? Shoot, what's the one? Talking loud and saying nothing. That's the first one. <laughs> James Brown, yes, he's talking loud, saying nothing, just saying nothing. All oh my God. It's the truth. It must be the truth. Just yes. saying, just, uh, yeah, I feel like if we don't get to the pole, we need to, and we're going to have to write it on, get your behind to the pole. I'm, I almost cussed, but I brought it back. Get, <laughs> but that, another one for me, uh, Donnie Hathaway and Roberta Flack, Be Real Black for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. What so, about you? Yes, I mean, fight the power. Shoot, that's you know, when, when they were they look, they were woke a long time ago. And Chuck D is out now. Is it is that Chuck D? The fight the power? Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's but, like, but I've been that. trying to tell y'all that was originally the Isley brothers, originally, the, I, exactly. Yeah. But the fight the power that we know mm -hmm. was Chuck D, right? And to hear him come out now and say, I've been trying to tell y'all, yeah. You, 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 you know, know, you know what's interesting, and um, I'm trying to say, oh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna try to be politically correct, but black music has always done that. Yes, black music has always been a reflection of kind of the 
time. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, starting with the blues, mm-hmm. it yep. was it was a way to it's Negro spirit. Go back to Negro spirituals. Yeah, it was a it was a way to yeah. um, it was emotion. It, it was it was a, a way of expressing emotion. And so the side, I mean, I can go through. So it, it's interesting. Like I have this playlist of there must be. I don't know, a thousand songs. It's Big Dane's Wills Up playlist on Spotify. Mm-hmm. But I, I only listen to it. I only listen to it on shuffle. And it's amazing how God works through the shuffle mm-hmm. and, and sends the Appreciate songs it. like just at the right time. Mm-hmm. It, it's almost like scary. Sometimes I just put it on and just what are you telling me, God? You know, and it's just the right. God would be in there DJ and just playing the right song. How God holds his hand. Yeah, his headphones like this. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and uh, so I, I, there, there's so many songs. Um, I mean, any Donny Hathaway, Stevie, Marvin Gaye, Marvin yeah. Gaye, E Forty. Yeah. You know, two. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of That's it. Right. All of it. You That's know, right. um, really speaks to me you know, uh, in, in so many different ways and, and at different times. And I, I, I think more, more than anything, um, taking the time to really just, and maybe that's just a musician and, and, and someone that works in the music business, but taking the time to stop and just like listen to the music. What is the intention of the music and listen to mm-hmm. it has been really super, super powerful because, it, you know, um, even some of the poppy bubblegummy stuff, really, it's it's coming from somewhere. Absolutely. And, and, and taking the time, even if it's just an emotion, taking the time to appreciate the intention of that music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I want to find out, because I tell you, every time I see this video, it just takes me there every time. I watched it yesterday just to get myself ready for today, and I've watched it many times prior to yesterday. But um, the interview... I guess you were interviewing interviewing with Kamen Kelly this particular day. Uh, I don't. I guess so. And he was interviewing Fantasia, mm-hmm. and they were talking. And she brought up safe in his arms, and then Kamen called you out, Avery. Honey, you took me there. Wow! Oh, and it's the same every time. Wow! Where where do you where do you get that? Where where does that? It's a rhetorical question, but it's not. Where does that? come from how do you tap into that what what i'm feeling it now just asking trying to ask this question yeah i you know what and i'm always humbled by that because i don't know yeah i don't know because i didn't want didn't even want anybody to 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 see that wow i because i was like no that's that this this was her interview this was eh, not for me to do that that was kind of out of and of course, when I sit down, then I, I always feel like I'm I'm not necessarily in control of what's going on. It it clearly when I sit down, I you know, but once I'm in it, I don't even. So I I couldn't even tell you. I am yeah. If I had, if I had my druthers, y'all would, nobody would have seen it. Nobody because I was like, oh, it was horrible. I was like, ah. And, 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 the, and, and the circumstances leading into it were, were, were a little bit interesting, but it's just how, again how, how great, God works. How God works. We, how we God were touring works. with a great, great friend of ours, um, Q Parker, and we were in the D.C. area, and we were we were scheduled to do this interview. That and I Q think was they, late. They, they have certain days that they just do like like back to back to back interviews, mm-hmm. and they got caught in traffic or something like that. So our slot was coming up, and and he wasn't there yet. Q wasn't there yet, so. Fantasia was there. They said, well, we'll put Fantasia first and then you go after you guys just wait here. And, you know, we said hello to Fantasia. And, you know, I, we had met in passing a couple of times once once before. But for whatever reason, Kame and Kelly, who was a great friend, great friend of ours. Of she was a good friend of ours. And, 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 yeah. and Q as well. Yeah. But, but came in. At, I don't, I don't even know exactly why. He was like, hey, why don't you come up here and sing a song? Yes. And it was kind of weird. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. what's so interesting is wow. that video. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, anytime we do a show or an appearance or, or any, someone references that video. Every. I mean, like more than almost anything, you yeah. know, it's probably in the top two or three things that people reference. I'm saying here in the States, overseas, overseas, everywhere. everywhere. And, and um, it was, it was just a really just God led moment. 
Yeah. And uh, so I'm thankful for the writer Darius Brooks for allowing us to right. to yeah. sing the song, and I'm grateful to the Tommies, uh, Milton Brunson, and the Tommies of Chicago, whom I listened to. That the talking about songs bringing you through. That was one of the songs. Mm -hmm. Same hearing the choir. That that's what would my, my mom would be playing on the AM station at home. Yeah, yeah. You know. When I was 14, and that, that would be playing. Those are the songs, you know. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, Walter Hawkins with Bishop Flunder singing lead. That's the stuff that 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 brought me. So the the honor of being able to sing those songs and they are meaningful to to, to folks too. That is that's a God thing, and we're grateful and humbled. Yes, completely humbled by that. You're the vessel. You're the vessel to communicate the message. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, Avery, people found breakthrough, I am convinced, wow. when, they, when they heard that and when they, as they continue to hear that. Because, wow. you know, the beauty of music is it's transformative. It is. It transforms the mind, the heart, the soul. And yeah. even on a spiritual level, it's transformative. Absolutely. And, and when people hear that. I know it transforms me every time I listen every, to it. Oh, gosh. Every I'm honored. Yeah, that's just, wow. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to go on and close out now. I know you guys have things you have to do. But, you know, um, you're busy too. Don't start now. You, can we congratulate you again? Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. This is wonderful. Thank you, Avery. I appreciate it. And thank, I, you for, thank you for having us. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And I tell <laughs> you, I hit roadblock after roadblock after roadblock trying to get to y'all. That's so how it is. He said, it's going to be done. Absolutely. It's going to be done tonight. That's right. So, well, wait, before you go to, I see that beautiful red lip you got on. I just need to be clear. Um, mm -hmm. My lip and lash and, and, yes, and yes. will be out very soon, and I'll have to send you some. So, that's that's the other thing we've been working on. Yes, ma'am. So, is, is yeah. it still is it under wraps right now? You can't talk about it, or can you? Well, we, we can. I just don't want it. I want it to be. Okay. What? We talk about it, but we're going to, we got to just. You know, boom, you will, it will make yeah, because right. we don't want folks to go to the page and one of the letters ain't on there right and sideways. Because that's the first thing that people go, let me see what she got going on. They look, and then, yeah, and then one of the pictures is off, and one of the eyes is in the wrong. You know what I mean? We want it to be. But just know that it's coming very, very soon. And you know, and, and, you know, and, and the, I, I do have to say this it is, it is named for my great grandmother who, um, who held, <clears throat> Who took care of other folks' children, mm -hmm. white folks' children, so that she could take care of her own daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had to honor her in this way. Mm -hmm. um, never wore a stitch of makeup, never wore any red lips. But those lips, these lips right here are her lips. And I was afraid to mm -hmm. wear red lipstick. I thought my lips were too big. Mm -hmm. So... We're doing this. I am doing this cosmetic line in honor of my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mama, me, my daughter, and everybody that we represent whose lips lips are full. If they thin, we listen. I'm doing it for you too. If whatever whatever your shade of black is, we're gonna have a red for you so that we can show off and be proud of who we are, proud of our beauty in its entirety. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. what's inside and outside yes and um so i am honored to bring bring our um our cosmetic line to to the world and uh hopefully it makes everybody feel good hopefully it makes you connect mm -hmm. with the, the parent because we look we've got so much and we all do dysfunction and i ain't dealing with this one and you know my grand you know that ain't really my grandmama and it, we've got so much of that yeah that even in that, we have to honor. We have to honor we, the, the dysfunction. That's why we are here where we are today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. So so that's an honoring all of the beauty. So I, we, you know, we clearly, you can tell I'm excited about it. And, and this is one of the colors here. It's, the, it's my... Um, Look at it, y'all. It's orange. <laughs> It's beautiful, Avery. It, it, it's it's beautiful. You're beautiful. Your union is beautiful, and it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. And I have some, I, I do have some final questions, and they yes. are the most look. They're the most important questions of the night. Yes, I mean truly the most. Yes. Let me let me turn the page. Okay. Okay. Phone notifications on or off? 
off, Dana? Uh, most of mine are off. Most of them are off. All right. Luther or Teddy P? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me tell you, let me tell you why. Let me tell you, he says, now 70, 30, two, no, right three, now. Now 64, <laughs> Teddy B, talk, talk about that 50, 50 love. <laughs> it's hard for me to say, I, I have to do a yes and on that one. No, because... come on. Yeah. We clearly know that they're both brilliant, but at the end yeah. of the day. If I had to roll with one. Come on. You got to, with the T and you did a little bit of the hair right there with the T. <laughs> And he be getting it with that. Yeah, I don't, that's a tough one. Ain't nothing that's like a one. black man with chest hair. Well, that, that Avery's might, trying to convince you, Dana. That might hit different for her. That it hit it did, clearly. But the <laughs> ladies, y'all know somebody know them talk. Sherry said Luther. Yes, Luther is fantastic. But Sherry, come on, Sherry. <laughs> oh, good. Who's, who's the spades champion? The, the spades champion? Uh-huh. Me. Please. Come on. <laughs> Me. Uh, okay. Look, I don't mean to cause any strife. <laughs> and we're gonna play tonight as soon as we get I got we got some gold cards we take from our son. <laughs> Who's the Uno champion? Who's the Uno champion? Oh, me, hands down. Hands down. So our seven-year-old nephew. Now our nephew, our seven-year-old nephew, nephew who's seven, he call he he, he don't cold. even know how cold he is on really. On, hold on, Uno. Yeah, he wins by mistake. He yeah. didn't even know. He didn't. He yeah. did one, and he's still sitting there. Like, up. how do you have seven draw fours? Like, how could that happen? <laughs> he got it. He did got an Uno spirit. Wait, I hate to bother you, but Sherry is talking about her Luther. She said she met Luther at a restaurant and was an idiot fangirl. Paulette, you've got to let Dana tell you his Luther story. Please. I promise you it'll be fantastic. Please. Tell you Just because Sherry Brown mentioned it. So Thank this, you, Sherry. <laughs> this must have been like 1990. It was the late 90s. And I think Luther was coming out with, I want to say it might have been that Dance With My Father song yes. or something around that time. And so... Uh, we were asked to play for not me. It was Dana and his other band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it was just like a pick. I, I was like a like a, a t you know a local musician, like just you know, hey, we got a show at this bar and blah blah blah. So I was one of those guys, and so I got asked to play uh, at this Luther Vandross record release party, and I was like, well, is Luther going to be there? It's like, no, I don't think he's going to be here. But they're just, you know, the radio stations are having this thing. So it was one of those gigs where, like, it's like a happy hour thing. It might have started at, like, five, and you got to play to, like, nine. And those are often not fun gigs. You know, you got to play mm. you got to play three sets, and it's just, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. you know, you just, you, you, you're doing it for the check, right? Right. <laughs> so we're playing, and... It just so happened my parents were in town. So my parents came to the gig with me and, you know, and um, and so we, we, we were playing and there's not a lot of people there. Nobody really gives a heck what we're playing. We're just kind of there playing. And then um, at, at some point, the club just started getting like super packed. Wow. Like, like all of a sudden, boop, and it's like, oh, where are all these people coming from? What did it sound like when people it like, got in? It's like people <laughs> like, they, like they appeared from nowhere. It was crazy. And then I see this guy kind of, this tall, slim guy with a leather jacket on. So he, 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 Sherry, it was Skinny Luther. It was, it was Skinny Luther. Yeah. He was, Skinny Luther was standing there. He was listening. We were all looking at each other. It's like, is that Luther Vandross? You're like, oh shit, everybody trying to be cool. And then you enter it. You play your best stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then so we finish the song, and then he walks over and says, "Hey, man, you guys sound good, man. Which one of my songs do you know?" Wow! And we're like, which ones do we know? Anyone yeah. you call, know, you know. And I don't know if we really do it or not. And so, <laughs> so he called. Uh, bad boy and, was and it? Bad I, boy? I think it was bad. It, it was either bad wow. boy or never too much. I think we did two songs. Uh -huh. and, and but but what happened? Yeah. So he, he called us on. So we started playing the intro and he, he walked out and he turned around and he said, don't mess my shit up now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me for guessing, but that's what he said. So we were like, cool. And so he, he, he 
he sang and he was very, um, he let other people, you know, like there was one, another singer, he let the other singer sing. And, you know, the Luther, so the other singer tried to do that, right? He, he did it and it sounded good. And Luther was like, and then Luther did it. And I swear to God, it shook the whole place, man. <laughs> yeah. They lost their mind. You got to tell them how he did it, how he admit how Luther did it. it, it <laughs> like it, it, it shook the whole place. And what was so cool, as I remember, that was the time where people first were starting to have, I think they were still flip phones at that time, mm -hmm. but they started to have like camera phones. Mm -hmm. And this lady was filming them with, his, with her camera phone. And he took her phone and started singing into the phone. And, and it was, I mean, it was like crazy. It was like a, like a crazy music video in that place. I mean, it got incredibly packed and hot and we're sweating. And then when the song ended, I swear to God, whoo, he, he like disappeared and the place was like empty again. Like and it never happened? Like it never happened. Did this really crazy. happen, Dana? Do you think you did that? I swear to God it happened. And this is how I know it happened. Like I love my parents and my parents love me, I think tremendously. And I think like, it, like most um, working class parents, uh, and they have a son that say, hey, I think I want to be a musician. They're kind of like, uh, you know, it's all this money for more house than you. <laughs> and so they so happens they were at that show that night. So as we're riding home, my dad says, so, uh, so this music thing, wow. you, you, you pretty serious. Huh? I was like, yeah, he's like, I think it, maybe you ought to go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe so, Dad. Thanks. And uh, but but it, it was it was a crazy experience. So I have to say Luther then, because just yeah, yeah. I, I I never met Teddy Teddy P. And te Teddy P. Philly Philly for me. So yeah. I you know. Yeah. But Luther, I I mean, yeah. I just like that story, and I like when you do the do the Luther one more time. Ask <laughs> <laughs> it to me. Oh, that is awesome. Now, I will not interrupt. <laughs> We're supposed to be gone, aren't we? We're like way over. We're sorry, Paula. You know, as long as y'all are good, I'm good. And I just, <laughs> I appreciate your 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 level of vulnerability, transparency, honesty. It's just been a beautiful, beautiful episode, and I'm so grateful. I'm Thank so grateful. For one final question: Who's the yes, better? Yes, yes. Who's the better cook? Ah, uh, my my wife is a better cook, hands down. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm a little. I'm, I'm kind of blinking, right? <laughs> I'm trying to hit or miss with it. Listen, uh -huh. tomorrow night, I am making, and I have everything I wish I could show you guys right now, but I am making, just so y'all can see, I'm doing Thai tomorrow night, Ooh. but I need for you to know what it is. I have to, I'm making Tom Ka Guy soup tomorrow uh -huh. night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. What time? So we can I've got over. lemongrass, ginger. Oh. Say it again. W when can we come over? What time is dinner? Uh, <laughs> bring the mask. And a drink. Four thirty. Exactly, of course. <laughs> no, but I, I think Dana is the. He, I'm the cook that is. I'm looking at instructions. Uh -huh. He throws stuff together. I don't remember you threw together that roast. His quarantine roast. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I had a look. I had you help. You absolutely but helped. You, and we you had some direction. So, so at the like right when quarantine we're going. I promise off, we're going, Paulette. One, one of our really, really close friends uh, called me and was like, "Yo, I got like a thousand gallons of sewage in my basement oh, right now." And he was like, "Man, can we just come stay with you guys for like? It shouldn't be more than a night or two. I, we just can't. It's just." We were like, yeah, man, come on. So, so it ended up being like two weeks or something like that. But what, what was super cool about it Listen. is his, his, his lovely wife uh, is a gourmet cook. Ooh, yeah. and, so, and, and, and so like we just learned so much from her while she was here. She said, I don't, I, I make everything from scratch except, except, for, except for like mayonnaise. I think she said, she said oh, I was a mustard. Okay. I thought she said mayonnaise and, and, and she was like, I, and I can do it, but it just, it's just easier, you know? And, and so for those two weeks, I mean, breakfast, lunch, man, snack, and dinner and like drinks and, and oh, pies God. and, I mean, just back to back to back to back to back. I know I personally gained twenty pounds. I know I did. And, and uh, but but it really showed us that you know cooking is an art. 
you know, and, and you should en- you should enjoy your food, and it's better for you, you know, if you kind of know what's going in it. Mm-hmm. And and so we we kind of adapted quite a bit of that, and mm-hmm. since then we've been doing a lot more, yeah, a lot more cooking. And, and you got to figure, like, for the last ten or so years, we had- we've been traveling and eating in restaurants like at least at least. Uh, four, five, or five times. four or five times a week. I mean, yeah. because we were traveling. When we yes. get home, it's like, yes. I ain't got no groceries anyway. You know, so, I mean, it's... it's it. Yeah, you can tell. Like, so, like, we've been home. I don't know, like, at the top of the, the, the show, Dana was doing it. Dana was the COVID-19 pounds. Honey, COVID-25. I, I started looking like a bunt cake. A whole bunt cake. But right. Dana was doing this at the top of the... Um, at the top of the Fruit flies because we got fruit here because we're at home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We didn't have Did you notice that mm-hmm. we didn't really have fruit flies or naps or anything? Mm-hmm. I, we weren't here. That we much. weren't we here, so yeah. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. And it's the truth. This is such a sidebar. I know the folk over here know. How do we get rid of fruit flies and gnats? They said um, vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Have you oh. used it? Have no, you tried it? I haven't tried it. So what you do is you get a you get a, a, a jar. If you have a jar or a, a, a low, um, a, a small a small little bowl, like a peach yeah. bowl or any kind of bowl, anything that you can put some liquid in. Yeah. Uh, you put a piece of plastic uh, plastic wrap over it. You slit oh, it. Dude. You slit it, and then the, the look. I have a jar in my in my bathroom, and that's just all at the bottom. So it works. Oh, it does work. okay. So apple cider vinegar and a little bit of um, dish detergent. So liquid dish detergent. Yeah. They can't get, get out because they can't yeah. get out. Someone said that to me. Uh, they he said dish detergent, honey. And apple the, cider vinegar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It works. Mm-hmm. Okay. My honey. And and listen, Avery, if if you are anything like me and took up uh, planting, so I have plants in the house. I, I got the plants. I potted the plants. Was really, really proud. Natch just started accumulating in the house. And I wonder what's Let me bless you. Let me bless you. Let me show you. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we're just taking over. Dana, go. <laughs> this is more than I could have ever imagined. Listen, neem oil will get you together. I have so many plants now. My father-in-law, we have these plants. I, I call them his grand plants because everyone I touch seems to die. But they're doing well now. But I've got neem oil with soap. Uh, oil and water, and, and I spray it on there. Um, I got it from Amazon, uh-huh. and I, I haven't seen spell that n e e m neem oil. So it's you put liquid, liquid soap in that? Liquid soap in this? Yep. I thought neem was- now the only thing I'm having issues with my vegetables because I tried to do some basil. Mm-hmm. Clearly, we're not the only ones who like basil. <laughs> So, and, and I didn't want to put anything on there to kill us when we eat the basil. So I, I kind of messed it up at this point. I can't spray anything on it too. So it's just, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen to the basil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't have any tips on that. So I'm, I apologize. Yep. See, sure, they know about neem oil, neem oil. I thought neem was like when you said your mama neem. <laughs> your mama neem. Good night, everybody. <laughs> God bless y'all. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Dana Avery, thank you so much. This thank has been you. tremendous. It's and been- for the audience, thank you so much for tuning in, for chiming in. It's been great. It's been great. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Let me look at my notes because I, I feel like I'm looking through something. As you're looking through it, uh-huh. uh, ask Dana for link to oh. playlists. He mentioned. That's right. Dana, uh, we want to know the playlist, the link. So uh, either yeah. after- uh-huh. if, if you, it, It's in Spotify and it's uh, it, it's called Big Dane's Wheels Up Playlist. Hold on, let me. Don't put the light on. Make sure you know uh, I'm, 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 don't I'm, put the light on you. Okay, all right. You really think you something else, don't you? You really? Avery, I'm y'all just, need y'all's own show. I don't know if you can. Oh, you can't see this. What are you not, doing? It's not an auto focus. That, that, is that light on the back of the iPhone? The is it like the sun? Who you tell it? It put it. You can put it under the covers, and it's just gone. I can put it through this sweater, and you still don't and see. You see, it. You yes, still exactly. don't see it through the sweater. You still see that? Uh-huh. Yeah, my eyeball. I'm sorry. I was trying to see if I could put a link. Put a. I don't even know how to add to the chat here, 
But uh, yeah, if, if, on Spotify, if you go to Big Dane's Wheels Up playlist, can you type that in? Big. Oh, look, look, Sherry is on it. Yep, yeah, all come on, oh, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. And I think I think there's yeah I, I don't know how many songs are in there but uh, that's uh, anytime I hear something that I like I just throw it in there and I just I hit see. it on shuffle I swear God speaks to me through that playlist I know that's right man I just I love how you all recognize acknowledge he who had, he, who's given you this good gift I it's wow. just it's encouraging because yeah. you know when when we fail to acknowledge him. At some point, he's gonna. He's not going to uh, acknowledge us. You know mm. what? What does the scripture say? If you deny me before man, I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. Mm. We gotta keep acknowledging him, mm. giving yeah. him his props. And, and you know what I think that is, and that because that's what I've been taught. I think it is because I don't believe that we we have a God who would treat us that way. Mm -hmm. I think when we don't acknowledge God. That is exactly what that is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? All the so the idea of not acknowledging God, we're, our awareness is dead. Mm -hmm. Once we become aware of God and God's blessings in our lives. I like used the pastor D and it. God. That was nice. God? Yeah. Yeah, that means <laughs> the, God in God's entirety, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Because and, and and not to, because my mama said you know what you say good because see God said seventy times seventy times and I'm like mommy some please know that it was a whole bunch of folks writing their interpretation of what God but the God that I the God that I acknowledges would not put me out as long as I am aware uh -huh. of God's presence and I I go even further even when I'm not aware of God's presence <laughs> God is taking care of me mm, yeah. come on now. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. many times I'm not, I, I'm, that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. But I really, just know I'm with you, call that. I had to put you in A flat. That, was A flat? Was A flat? Did you play yeah. A flat? That's B flat, oh, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Y'all trying to play something? No, we got, listen, oh. we gotta go. We, but we were, but we're going to do, uh, uh, listen, we get more of what we not Listen, Shay. Is yes, she said we get more of what we acknowledge. That is the truth. Yeah, that yeah. is it. That is the power that we have. Right. We put the power on God in that way. And I tell you, we, we're often waiting for God to do yep. something. And I swear, I believe in my soul. God is like, yep. I'm waiting on you to do yep. something. Yep. I, 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 I move. The, your very movement engages it 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 empowers it's like um like the uh solar like when you do what you say what did you tell the kids with the battery when you drive if you don't drive the car mm -hmm. but i don't think god is like that like a battery though because the battery go dead yeah I, it, it help this analogy because i thought i was going somewhere well, I, probably need well, a drink. Let, let, I think let, i need a drink let me help <laughs> you're just saying you're, you're absolutely right acknowledging god that's it is essential and however god appears for you and you know and, however and, god appears and and, and and you know I, I, I believe that god god we are all part of god you know what i mean and there's yes. god in all of us and and our our thoughts our emotions and our works mm -hmm. are how we activate yeah you know our blessings mm -hmm. And, and and it takes it takes faith and works to do that. Mm -hmm. And and often we're we're waiting for God to do something, and the, our lack of action, our lack of faith, disables our our wants and needs. And and and, and in many cases, without getting overly 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 deep, but but, but 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 with all that said, yeah, you actually absolutely have to acknowledge. Except God. We gotta go out with a song. We'll find out in a second. I don't know we're gonna do that. No, we just want to do real fast. It may or may not be two. It, it, it we just had so much fun. I haven't done it a long time. What are we oh about to do? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We're going to see what's going to happen. Just cut. Mm, mm, mm. So just because we're at this place, just real quick, just something. We just, just a little bit of prayer room, and you guys can sing with us or not. Mm. But um, whatever God looks like to each of us, we just we honor that. Mm. And, uh, yeah.
Oh, let me scoot back so I'm you, in the head. Yo, you see how we prepared? Huh. When well, the spirit fall. moves it, you got the flow. You're not gonna, oh, you move. You got it, don't fall, honey. We're gonna fall, honey. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Somebody called me and told me that my friend was in trouble, but I was so far away, all I could do was pray. I've been there before many nights I lay on the floor, but I'm singing for you today, oh, because somebody prayed. And if you come looking for me, yeah, just know that I'm in my prayer room, praying for you. Hey, if you come looking for me, yeah, oh, you know I'm in my prayer room, praying for you. Hey, uh, even though I'm not there. Know that I care. I'm in my prayer room praying for you. So, family, we say pray. Everything's gonna get better. If I'm praying for you and you're praying for me, pray. Yeah, everything's gonna get better, better. And then we've gotta believe yeah, that everything's gonna get better. Do you believe? Do you believe that everything's gonna get better, better? And then we've gotta wait. Watch everything get better. Sometimes you gotta sit back and just wait. Hey, watch everything get better. Yeah, we tell you to pray. Believe and wait. Oh, watch everything get better. Wherever you are, I'll say everything's gonna get better. Mm. I don't care what it looks like, everything's gonna get better. We gotta believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to believe it before you see it, right? And then, and then sometimes you got to close your eyes and see it before you see it. So it, everything's gonna get better. Hey, better, better. Yeah, 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 better, better. Thank you. God bless y'all. We love y'all. Thank you so much for letting us have this time with you, Paulette. Thank you, Avery. Thank you, Dana. Thank y'all for watching. Join me next week, same time, same place, for a special edition of Profiles with Paulette Payne, where we honor the memory of Congressman John Lewis. Thank y'all for watching. Be good. Be safe. Take care. Good night. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.